Good afternoon, I'm uh, Doug Carey, I'm a Scottish artist and I'm here in my exhibition at the Kelly Gallery in Glasgow. These are the original drawings but from, from the illustrations which are in the um, Polar Society book by Sir Walter Scott. I received an email from the Polar Society last year in February and they asked would I be interested in doing the illustrations for Sir Walter Scott's Rob Roy. And um, the only concern I had about that then was because they wanted ten, they wanted them in pastels and you can't do pastels unless they're big, well at least I can't. So they were considerable size drawings and my concern was that maybe I wouldn't have them finished by October. But in actual fact I had them finished by July because I ate, slept and drank, drank uh, the work and whilst I was, although I, I did a lot of research, and I read the book, Sir Walter Scott's book on Rob Roy, but I also bought the audio version by Sean Barrett, which I played from morning to night. I normally listen to music when I'm working, but in this case, I listened to the audio version. So, I, I, you know, I was there, it, it, it made me, I was just very, very um, immersed. I was immersed in the book, which helped me do the work for the, for the drawings. For me, it was a joy doing this work. I loved it, absolutely loved it. And although I hadn't read anything from Sir Walter Scott before, I'm now a fan. All of the characters are... I had to be very careful about the, the costumes that they wore, so that's where the research came into it. But also, what was lovely was that the Polo Society actually I didn't realise it to begin with because I sort of started off doing images which I thought maybe that's what they wanted. But in actual fact, they wanted to anyone looking at the book to know that it was my work. And that's what set me free. And from then on, it was just a joy, a joy from start to finish. June asked me to do this and she, uh, I said, what, what bit do you want me to read? And she went, oh, you just pick a bit. That's like asking you to pick something in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Eh? Has anyone here read a Walter Scott novel? One. Well, it'll still be one at the end of the day. I've still not, I've still not finished this. He's the hardest author to read I've ever come across. Um, anyway, the bit I've chosen to read today is when the book's actually not even told by Rob Roy, it's told by an English businessman who uh, happens to meet him. And it's, it's like a James Bond novel. Rob Roy is this undercover guy who doesn't even use his real name when you first meet him. So the guy has already met him but doesn't know he's met him. And it goes on and on. And this is, this is the evening that he first uh, meets Rob Roy, which I chose for... Well, one of the reasons is the description of Glasgow in here reminds me of Glasgow in lockdown, you know, because he talks about what Sunday evening is like in Glasgow because of the religious elements of the people who lived here, shall we say. So I'll just start then. <coughs> oh, every chapter has a small verse to introduce, and this one is from Venice Preserved. On the Rialto, every night at 12, I take my evening's walk of meditation. There we too will meet. Full of sinister augury, for which, however, I could assign no satisfactory cause, I shut myself up in my apartment at the inn, and, having dismissed Andrew, after resisting his importunity to accompany him to St. Enoch's Kirk, where, he said, a soul-searching divine was to haunt forth, I set myself seriously 
to consider what were best to be done. Rashley, he's the baby, yeah. Rashley uh, and his machinations occurred more than once to my remembrance, but so rapid had my journey been that I could not suppose him apprised of my arrival in Glasgow, much less prepared to play off any stratagem against my person. I did not fear any single opponent. Assassination was neither the vice of the age nor of the coming of the land. Yet secretly cherished hope that Diana Vernon might, by what chance I knew not, through what means I could not guess, have some connection with this strange and dubious information. She alone knew of my journey from her own account. She possessed friends and influence in Scotland. She had furnished me with a talisman whose power I was to invoke when all other aid failed. Suppress the vehement argument and protracted disputes of those of more advanced age. Notwithstanding the numbers who passed me, no general sound of the human voice was heard. Either. Better, she's war, a Roman, a mere Roman, do you play with him, or any other idle slut, rather than hear what might do him good other days of his life be, you or me, Mr. Havergal, or any other sober and sponsible person. Reason, sir, is what he cannot endure, Curtis. At length, they altogether ceased. When a human form, the first I had seen for two hours, appeared, passing along the bridge from the southern shore of the river, might nevertheless be an absolute stranger. Can you not give me that information here? I demand it. You must receive it from your eyes, not from my tongue. You must follow me, or remain in ignorance of the information which I have to give you. I will show them a tomb room and a lost lodger before tomorrow. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I did notice in the forward to Jean's beautifully illustrated book, um, the, um, the lady who wrote the forward said that um, Walter Scott wrote all his novels to be read aloud. I can only assume people spoke like that <laughs> at that time, or it was translated from the Gaelic. But, uh, but it's certainly a beautiful read, and it's equivalent to any modern spinal, and I heartily recommend it. So please. Yes. <laughs>